Welcome back to the Hillbilly RV channel. <laughs> Today, I got a good one for you. Uh, but before we get to that, um, I have started another YouTube channel. It's Hillbilly RV Behind the Curtain. Uh, it's just kind of personal stuff, uh, stuff that I would never put on the, uh, the regular Hillbilly RV channel. Uh, it's just gonna be, you know, just day-to-day -day stuff like behind the curtain. Um, and so if you wanna go check that out, feel free. Uh, if you don't wanna go check it out, don't. Uh, but if you do, and you think it might be something that you'd like to see more of, please subscribe, ring the notification bell, and you'll get notified when I post new videos. Now, the first new video on that channel won't be live until Friday morning, February the 19th at 9 a.m. So, um, like I say, just go check that out if you want to. Um, yeah, now let's get, get to the funny here. Um, yesterday I went on a job and the guy had uh, two, two GFCI outlets in his camper that would not reset. Um, they had a little yellow light on them when I got there. And uh, I, I wished I'd have videoed it. Um, just didn't seem like the right thing at the time and then when we got done you know I told the guy about the youtube channel and he's like oh man he said next time you come work on something he said i'll be your cameraman he said i love to learn and uh, he said yeah i'll help you out all i can i'll i'll run a camera whatever i was like well huh. um, <laughs> i wish i'd known how how absolutely cool he was before um i did the job but um like I say, you had two GFCI outlets that would not reset. Um, so I went to the first one. It was an outdoor one, which I thought was weird because it had a main GFI outdoors. It's behind a weatherproof cover, but still, I thought that was weird. I took the cover off. You always, you always take the cover off the outside outlet first. And it wasn't full of water because I've seen a lot of those be plumb full of water and uh, didn't have any water in it. So we pulled the uh, outlet out and uh, I took the uh, I took the black wire off of it. That was the end of the line on that one. So uh, that was the only outlet on that circuit. So I took the black wire off, uh, put my meter on ohms, checked it. There's no ground fault. So I said, well, we got a bad outlet. Okay. So we go inside and uh, we checked that one. Now it was in series, but I, I took the outlet out of the wall, I put my meter on ohms again, and checked both black wires, the one coming in, the one going out, there was no ground fault. So I said, well, you got a bad outlet here too. I only have one on the truck. And uh, so I changed the one in the bathroom. Yeah, everything's cool. Uh, worked just fine when we got finished. And uh, it would uh, reset, it would trip, you know, do everything it's supposed to do. So I got to thinking today, I said, well, I've still got that bad outlet. I'll just rig it up on a test bench here and I'll show you how we diagnosed it. And I, I bought two new ones yesterday on my way home. Uh, I always keep, a, usually keep a white one and a black one on the truck, but somehow I'd sold my white one. It didn't get replaced. So I just had one black one and that's what he needed. And uh, so I bought two on my way home last night. So I was just going to show you how we did it and how to fix it. Well, guess what? I went to all this trouble of setting this up on a test bench, make it kind of look like it's installed because uh, I wanted to make it as realistic as possible. Well, guess what? Ain't nothing wrong with it. So what was going on? I don't know. Because uh, the gentleman even went uh, to Lowe's uh, after I left and bought another black outlet to put in the outside and I called him this morning and it's like everything cool he said yep absolutely so I got, I got that other one changed and everything's good to go I said awesome so I don't know what was going on there um, I even thought well a gentleman told me that this one came out of the bathroom he said it did kind of get to where it was tripping, but then it would, uh, you know, that would it would work fine for a while, and then it got to where it would trip after like five minutes. Well, that's weird. 
So I even got my heat gun out and heated this one up. Thought maybe if it gets hot, it'll trip. No, I plugged a fan into it. Let the fan run for probably 10 minutes. Plugged the heat gun into the same outlet and uh, heated that outlet up and it's a no-go. It's, it's working perfectly. So uh, let me show you what we did here. <laughs> As you can see, I set it up on a little test bench. Uh, I use my, uh, my new favorite thing now is my WAGO connectors to, uh, to hook it up to power. Uh, go, go to my Amazon store, check those out. I use my most favorite of strippers to do this job. I, like I said, I set this up on this board. I even screwed a box to the board, put the outlet in the box. I was gonna make it as realistic as possible. But as you can see, it's fine. It's plugged in right now. Uh, and I can trip it. Okay, and then it will reset. So what was going on yesterday when I was in a camper? I have no idea. Uh, I guess I'll uh, give this guy a week or so and I'll call him back and say, hey, is everything still working? He says, yeah, okay. Well, I mean, I, I expect he'll probably say, well, yeah. I was like, okay, well, I don't know. Crazy campers. All right, so, well, that was a complete bust. Do y'all ever have things happen like that? Something's broke and then it ain't broke. Has that ever happened to y'all? Any electricians out there? Can you explain to me maybe what was going on? Is there maybe just a wee little bit of ground fault somewhere in that camper? And it was uh, this, the outlet was getting weak. I put a new one in, it's stronger. I don't know. Uh, anybody got any answers? I'd be happy to read the comments. So go down there and leave me a comment. Let me know what uh, you think was going on. I have one other thing I'd like to do tonight. I changed out a Lippert uh, Schwintech or in-wall uh, slide motor today. And uh, it's one of those situations where physically you see nothing wrong with the motor. It just won't, won't run. So I'm going to tear that motor apart and uh, see if I can see what's wrong with it. Um, I've already bought a new one. We've replaced it. So this one's junk because um, they're not made to come apart. Uh, I think they're mostly crimped together and stuff. So we'll probably have to destroy it to get it apart, but uh, let's uh, let's tear into that Lippert slide room motor and see if we can see what makes it tick or what made it stop ticking. Let's take a look at this motor. I'll tell you what we usually find and I'll tell you what we found on this one. Now usually what we see with these Lippert motors is either one of these little old bitty wires are broke or the motor's been wet and it's just all rusty and crusty. And uh, I mean, just obviously ain't gonna work no more. But this one looks fine. I see a little bit of water damage right here on this side, but not much at all. So uh, let's, uh, let's get started taking this thing apart and uh, see how much damage we can do. That little plastic cap off. Now see these wires used to be, they used to be soldered right to this board. This is a, this is what is counting the revolutions. Uh, that's how the um, Schwintec system works. Is uh, this little doodad here is counting the revolutions of this motor. That's how it keeps both sides of the room in time because there's no mechanical timing between both sides of the room. You got a motor over here, you got a motor over here, and uh, the only thing that uh, keeps it in time is the motor controller is counting the revolutions of each motor. So uh, yeah, I don't, see, uh, I don't see anything wrong there. Uh, let me see if we can access the brushes. I might have to get, uh, I might have to get a little bit of creative here. Uh, so yeah, let me, uh, cause this is all cramped. Like I say, it's, it's not designed to come apart. 
So let me see if I can figure out how to get this uncrimped. So like I said, I'm not worried about tearing it up, but I don't want to tear it up so bad that we can't see what was going on with it. Let's see if I can do this without stabbing myself with a screwdriver too. Um, y'all feel me bleeding already there? Mm -hmm. hmm. All right, I think we're gonna go full grill on this thing. I think I'm gonna take a, a, a cutting wheel, cut this, uh, cut the top of this motor off so if we can access those brushes and the armature. Uh, so, I dissected that motor a little bit. Let's see. Here comes the armature. The rotor. Let's see. Yes, yeah, the rotor in. Well, I think I know what's wrong with it. I don't know exactly how we're going to access it yet. <laughs> well, I know what was wrong with it. Yeah, I got to get it apart enough to show y'all what was wrong with it. Ah, oh, okay. We got to get the pickup off the end. Let's see if we can get this. Oh, there, there we go. Well, that was easy. Okay, still don't want to come apart. Why not? <laughs> Why on earth? I'm gonna erase all the evidence. Trying to get this crazy thing apart. There we are. All right. Y'all see that? There's a there's a spider's web or some kind of insect or something. That was completely wrapped around the commutator where the brushes is supposed to make contact. It's some kind of insect, I guess. <laughs> I mean, the only way to get in there, the only way to get in there and clean it is to destroy the motor. That's crazy. That was wrapped. That was wrapped completely around that commutator right there. You know, you got you got your commutator, and then you got your brushes in here. In the cap, one of them broke, flew off. But yeah, those brushes have to make contact with that commutator. Well, that's crazy. Well, there's what was wrong with this one. I guarantee it. Well, now we know what happened to that motor. 
Uh, <laughs> that's crazy. Now, what kind of insect would go in there and build a web and then I'm, or some kind of cocoon or something and then it just got wrapped up in that, in that commutator? That's crazy. I love, I love bugs and insects and mice. They've made me a lot of money over the years. Uh, I've seen mice destroy things, chew water lines in two, chew up wires, you know, bugs get into furnaces. You've seen, if you've seen any of my furnace videos, you've probably seen some bugs in the furnace uh, that we had to get out and stuff. So uh, yeah, strike another one for the, for the insects. So that's, that's all I've got. Um, I think we've done all the damage we can do for one evening. So uh, I'm going to go up and fix another one and uh, y'all have a fantastic day.